It was only a matter of months. Late 2019, we heard about the coronavirus spreading in China, and it seemed like the next thing we knew, the virus was knocking on our door. The first known U.S. case in Washington. We took precautions when the lockdowns masked up, businesses and restaurants closed. Then President Trump called it the China virus and the Kung flu. City streets emptied, and as the virus spread, so did something else. Over the past year, crimes against Asian Americans have skyrocketed. Attacks happening on city streets in the middle of the day. Grandmothers pushed down, dads with strollers attacked. And this isn't the first time Asian Americans have walked lighter or talked more quietly in their own cities. Even Americans who fought bravely, heroically for freedom, felt out of place in the places they were born. Hilliard, December 7, 1941. 17-year-old Fred Shiyosaki is running track at Rogers High School, living with his parents and siblings in the apartment above his parents' laundromat, and listening to the radio when the bombs fell on Pearl Harbor. And we heard this story about you know, the, you know, the, the Japs this and the Japs that. This is Fred from an interview in 2006 walking us through that day. I think I felt vulnerable. I didn't know what was going to happen. Fred stayed home from school the next day. People stopped doing business at the laundromat. Then leaders in Spokane's Japanese community disappeared. The FBI swooped down and picked them up and they were gone. And they ended up in those, you know, that uh, detention camp down in Arizona. At the same time, men Fred's age were being drafted into service, so he did what many young men did, went to sign up to serve in the Army. So I went down in August of uh, yeah, 1942 and, and uh, signed up, and of course I turned out to be a 4C, and, uh, ineligible to be drafted uh, enemy alien or something of that sort. So much of um, their lived experience seems so relevant to what's happening in the country right now. Author Daniel James Brown knows a lot about Fred and men like him. In his new book, just out this week, he's written about Fred and several other Japanese American men who fought in World War II. Phrases and tropes that were applied to Asian Americans, um, comparing them to insects and vermin and disease. The author of the famed Boys in the Boat sat down with Fred several years ago. Fred was uh, <laughs> Fred's a very spirited guy. So in fact, his father um, complained because he kept having to buy Fred new pairs of eyeglasses. Fred kept coming home with his eyeglasses broken. Fred graduated high school, and since he couldn't go to war, he went to college down the street at Gonzaga University until August of 1943. I think, you know, thinking back, I just felt I had to be involved in it some way. The Army opened up the volunteer, all-Japanese, 442nd Regimental Combat Team. Fred signed up and shipped out to Europe ending up in some of the most intense battles of the war. Until you experience it and survive it, uh, you can't describe what the hell goes on. The 442nd and Fred's K Company fought in Italy, France, and Germany. It's on-the-job training. And it's a matter of being quick or dead. In France, K Company would take part in the famous rescue of the Lost Battalion, a brutal, week-long fight to free Americans, mostly Texans, trapped behind enemy lines. The, the, just, just artillery coming in and rifle fire, small arms fire. And uh, God, as I start up that uh, slope, I see this kid I was friends with with a bullet in his head, you know, he was dead. And, uh, oh, Jesus, I don't know. As friends died around him, a mortar exploded in a tree above Fred's head, sending shrapnel into his side. <laughs> the medic patches it up, puts some on it. That's it. So we keep going. When the shooting finally stopped. Oh my God, it's done. But I don't know, it just was hard anybody left. Their company was something like 200 people. When they came back down off that mountain, there were only 17 of them still still walking. They didn't realize they'd won a battle that would be talked about across Europe. Movies would be made about their assault up Suicide Hill. There was no, no, hey, we're going to rescue these guys kind of stuff. Nobody ever told us that. But then, you know, they are dumb, <laughs> dumb infantrymen, what the hell? <laughs> I don't think we ever uh, felt heroic about it. It was not till well afterwards that we realized what had happened up there. Fred went on to earn a bronze star and purple heart. War's over and God, you think, Jesus, well, I made it. I think I made it. Fred came back to Spokane, back to the apartment above the laundromat and went back to GU as an American hero. He fought for freedom overseas and for freedom at home. 
He died last month at the age of 96. His story lives on in Brown's book out this month, and the lessons of his lifetime remain. The sacrifices of our parents and the sacrifices of the men of the 442nd were, 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 are our way of earning that freedom, the right to be called an American, not a hyphenated American. And that's, I guess that's my message to all, everybody, is that you don't, you, you just, it, this stuff doesn't give, get given to you, uh, isn't given to you. You earn it, and you earn it. Every generation earns it in some way or another. Fred Shiyosaki is buried in Spokane. You can read his full story online at the Densho Digital Repository or in Daniel Brown's new book, Facing the Mountain. You can find a link to both of those sites by finding this story on KXOY.com.